Uh, hey there. Um, we are doing a series of videos that are going to be kind of quick little walkthroughs to give you five things that you need to be thinking about doing, depending on this is this one selling your house, looking to buy a home, uh, the inspection process, the loan process, numerous things. And a big reason for this is today there is so much information out there that people get really confused. I find that more often uh, than not. And so right now, between what you see on the news, you can see that somebody's offering to guarantee to buy your house. And then there's a corporation that's going to buy your house or you can buy before you sell. What do you want to do a for sale by owner? And then if you want to contact a realtor in the traditional sense, uh, where do you begin with that? And uh, that's what we're going to run through is just kind of give you five things that we think each seller should do just in a, in a quick run through or a little bit of advice. If this is something you're thinking about doing in the coming year. Again, my name is Scott Talley with Five Market Realty. As you can see, my older outdated picture below. Um, let's get started here. I'm just going to go to the first page, which is the main things that we're going to do. It's five things. Some of them will seem pretty obvious, but it's really the details in those. Number one, research your realtor. We're going to go through that and explain why. From that realtor choice that you make, establish a market plan, market timing with your agent. You're going to need to know when to go to market and to have your house ready. A lot of people just trying to go, go, go. Sometimes that's needed, but if you have a little bit of time, it can go a long way. Declutter and remove personal items. You've seen a lot of that if you're an HGTV watcher. Fix and repair items in need. That is something that can cost sellers a lot of money, um, even in a strong seller's market. And an exterior facelift is also a good idea before hitting the market. Let's get to this first one here, which is research and find a good realtor. I've got a big Google logo here because we all know that's the biggest search engine there is out there. And um, that's something you're going to need to use, too. First off, you can start by asking a friend. At the top, I do say that a qualified person, finding the right person and then being qualified is key. Most of you have people that you're friends with that you trust, and there's a good chance they have someone they trust. So feel free to ask someone for a good referral to a realtor agent but research that referral. And that's where Google comes in because one of the things you want to look for is right here is to check client reviews in our industry. We have now a lot of ways that clients can vet the work that people do. Uh, I highly recommend Google reviews, but you can also look on Zillow personally as an agent. I don't put uh, reviews on Zillow anymore. I have them linked to it because Zillow owns that and we use Google, but um, you know, you also want to vet out. Do they have experience in your area? If your friend sends you a referral and it's their cousin, and they sell in two area codes away, you need to be sure that that's the uh, right person for you. And you can do this by looking on Zillow or Realtor.com at past sales. So some areas you're going to have people that sell all around. Some smaller areas is going to be really compact. But any good person actively working in the market is going to have information online about their sales. Lastly, inquire about their marketing plan and their commission structure. You need to understand how they get paid and what that amount's going to be and what they do to market your property. Now, I will warn you that less money being paid is often not better. We see all the time where somebody's going for a discount broker and that broker has has made an error in price and they actually end up leaving money on the table and they could have paid more commission and made more money. That's something that you need to be aware of, especially in the current market of 2022. Um, now, establishing a market plan and timing with your agent, that is very important. And the biggest thing here, price your home correctly. We live in a time of a seller's market where all your neighbors are telling you how much your house is worth. And I get it. You don't want to leave money on the table. But if you look at this graph, when you take away, when you start overpricing your property, the amount of potential buyers for your property goes way down. Even 10% is cut in half. And if you go 50 percent above, it, it's reduced down to just a 10 percent amount of buyer pool where there's even a strategy some people employ. They might list barely below market to try to drive up more, uh, more traffic, maybe more offers. Market timing and your plan for the move. You, if you're moving somewhere, you know, you don't want to sell your house before you you can. That just kind of goes without saying. Figure out the moving parts there. Um, listen to the suggestions of your house. This is not meant to be an insult. The agent is not putting down your house. It's trying to help you sell your house. And then get ready to do your part in getting the house ready. Um, most realtors are not going to get out a rake and clean your leaves, but they might have great contacts that can help you get work done. And then uh, lastly, a lot of sellers do this by accident. They try to sell the home themselves 
once they've hired an agent. They talk to their friends. They talk to somebody. They want to be present at showings. Get out of your own way. You can be your own worst enemy. It is unless you do this for a living, you don't know what you might do incorrectly. So let the agent do their job. This one is pretty big. We've seen a lot of this now on TV shows, declutter and remove personal effects. Look at this great laundry room on the right hand side. And don't we all wish ours looked like that? Well, do your best to make yours look like that in your closets when it's time to go to market. If you clean out the storage areas like your closets and garage, your house is going to seem bigger. Spaces also look bigger if they're clean and organized like this laundry. If you had baskets sitting on that countertop or clothes thrown about and iron sitting out, it's going to look less useful than it does nice and clean. The rest of the house, too, people can sometimes clutter furniture in their rooms. Um, you might need to evaluate your living room. Does it need every piece of furniture? Your dining room, does it need the full leaf in the table or does it need to be brought down? Um, lastly, your kitchen, one of the biggest areas of the house. Clean off the countertops in your kitchen and your bathroom. Make clean lines. Make it appear to have a lot of space. Show the space. Don't clutter the space. And I sometimes go back and forth on this last one, which is to remove personal photos so the buyers can see it as their home. In some cases, people have a lot of photos and they do need to roll down. In some cases, it's a very minimal amount and it's not that impactful. This is where you would rely on your agent for advice. Fix items in need of repair. Now, this is the one that a lot of people put off, and there's going to be a lot of items that could be little ticky-tacky things. If you know about them, go ahead and address them. But if you if you avoid this, this can impact your sales price, even in the event of a really strong seller's market, which is what we have right now. So I'll give you an example of you got the offer you dream of, but you knew your air conditioner was 25 years old. It's going to come up an inspection. So small items, try to address them. And then ask your realtor what needs to be addressed in their view, that they can see and after you share what you know about it. So these small repairs can go a long way on an inspection report. But let's look down here. If you have a very old appliance or like a system in the house, consider the pros and cons of replacement. So for instance, um, if your air conditioner is 12 years old, you know, and it's working, that's great. If your air conditioner is 25 years old, it might be time to say, hey, we got the goodie out of this one. Let's go ahead and put a new one in so the buyer can feel good about that. And uh, you might see it. It won't affect your appraisal value. That's where another thing people get confused. A new roof, new appliances, and a new air conditioner do not impact your appraisal directly. They might help it sell, but it's not going to uh, affect your appraisal value as much. And then at the bottom, there are options to go ahead, maybe get an inspection done on the front end, find some items uh, so you know about them and you can address them then. Or there's also warranty options where we might, Purchase a 500 to 750 range, maybe even thousand dollars, a one year home warranty for that buyer. That if they buy the house and something were to break, they have a kind of a plan that can help them uh, get it repaired. And then lastly, we're going to close in on the outside. So this is kind of a no brainer too an exterior facelift to your house. Examine your house's curb appeal. What does it look like? I like you to think is your house smiling back at you? Is it bright? Um, clean the yard. Consider adding mulch and flowers for color. Um, this is easier done in the spring and summer, but in the winter months, uh, some, some bright flowers added in that uh, uh, can go a long way along with fresh mulch. Almost every home I visit could use pressure washing and caulk on the outside. So you should assume that's something you should look at. You just go ahead and give your, your house a bath and see if there's any gaps in the siding, anything around the windows that might could use a little caulk. Clean out the gutters. Stuffed gutters are going to show up on inspection every time. If you're not doing it annually, you're probably looking at more maintenance costs to your fascia board. And of course, clear off limbs from the house. A lot of times limbs will start rubbing against the shingles and the siding or overcoming the, the roof. And, you know, if you got out there yourself with a, a tree cutter or even hired somebody to go out there for about 30 minutes to an hour, it can really help uh, show off your house and help on the inspection. And weigh the pros and cons of repainting parts of the exterior. From time to time, it might just be the fascia board and some of the window trim that could use uh, some paint. Sometimes the outside of the house as a whole needs it. And in some cases, it's really just the pressure washing. Overall, you want to brighten the appearance of your home from the street. That's the big deal. You want people to drive by and go look at a lovely home instead of what am I going to need to do to make this look good? And, you know, right here on this last page, this is just saying if you have any questions, be able to, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, one of the things that I put this out there for is 
there is so much information out there that it can be really confusing. You might get a letter in the mail that says, I want to buy your house. You might get a letter from a realtor looking to uh, help a client buy a house. That is one way to go. Just know that realtor represents the buyer. And then when you have people that are saying, I guarantee something on your house, I guarantee you an offer. Beware that a guarantee and one dollar is an offer. And sometimes it's just to get their foot in the door. So you need to vet out the person you're working with. In our uh, company, we basically like to try to be a lifelong, year long consultant, even when our clients aren't working in real estate. If the government audited your, your taxes, you're not going to call a corporation to say, hey, can you come uh, help me with my taxes? You're going to call a tax company or your CPA. If you get sick, you go to the doctor. You don't call. You don't go on Zillow to try to find a cure. I know there's WebMD, but there's a lot of information out there. And if you're not a professional in the market right now, it's easy to get it wrong because the market's moving fast. You might leave money on the table or overprice. Um, the computer can't tell you everything, and it really helps to be able to talk to somebody that you know you can trust that you vetted out through your friends or possibly through online sales and reviews. Here is uh, my contact information, 706-340-0424. Email Scott at 5M Realty. And our personal website, which is where there's more blogs, probably where you found this video, maybe YouTube, AthensRealEstateTalk.com. I'm the broker of 5 Market Realty. And uh, if I'm not the person for you, we hope somebody at 5 Market is. And hopefully this is just a good way to get you started on what you need to do. The first thing, research a good person to talk to. Thanks, and we hope to hear from you, and uh, reach out if you have any questions around real estate at any time.